The JMU Dukes and the Duke Blue Devils are about to battle it out. Now, we're going against Duke today. So, you know, we drove a couple hours down the road in North Carolina to get things going. Joe Dish has been playing great. We had a close game against BYU last week. Let's get today's game going. And right now, as you can see, we have the number five pass offense in the nation. The rush, the rush offense, though, could use some work. So, we're going to pick things up on the ground today. Now, here comes Joe Disher in today's game, 18 and 24 last week. Over 300 yards. The young fella is killing it. What I'm kind of surprised about so far this year is that we haven't actually seen Joe Disher's name pop up in the Heisman race. I mean, this dude has been a monster all year long. Give this dude some love in the Heisman race. Now, one place that Joe Disher has been slacking, though, which is probably where a lot of his criticism has come from the Heisman voting, has been his passing yards. He only has about 500 in the year, but I think he can go ahead and get a bunch against Duke's defense. We still want to make sure we focus on Cameron King today, though, so the young fella's out here running, and his first carry of the game goes for eight yards, a solid start. By all accounts, JMU is the top 10 team in the nation, and we should be blowing out Duke today. So I'm expecting, like, a 50-point bomb today. That's what I'm expecting, 50 points by the JMU Dukes, beating the Duke Blue Devils, and if Joe Disher's running in the offense just like this, I think we got a chance to drop a 50-burger. For most accounts, the offense has been really good today, but right now we have a crucial third down, and we've got a guy across the middle that's going to be close. Drew Coach is going to catch it. He's going to turn up the field, and no one is going to catch him. JMU had a little bit of a scare that they couldn't convert on first and second down, but on third down, a strike from Joe Disher hits Drew Coates, and that's a touchdown for JMU. Now, Duke has a pretty good quarterback and a really good wide receiver, but the running game has been low-key suspect so we're gonna try and get some blitzes in here today get some pressure on them and stop them but look a nice little pass to the outside they fumble but that is gonna be a first down the key for JMU this season if they want to maintain being a top 10 or even move up to be a top 15 oh look at this to be a top 5 team as you get turnovers and Curtis Oliver is gonna go to the house this dude has been on a hot streak he gets a pick six to start the game for JMU's defense so we drive down on offense and kill it on defense we get a pick six this game is on fire the biggest complaint for JMU this season has by far been the consistency of the defense now we're gonna to hope today that we can stop Duke they're going for a lot of quick passes a little bit of a West Coast offense but we're shot Gene Jr. gets a nice tackle to stop him. Duke continues to move the ball seven yards in that last game. They're going to go to opt to run it. Oh, we had no idea they were going to run it. Oh, a fumble. We get a fumble. Lewis is going to pick it up. Xavier Lewis, the defensive tackle, scoops that one up. And the JMU defense gave up some yards in that drive. But a hard hit by none other than Rashad Gene Jr. is going to dislodge that one. Boom. Oh, excuse me. That's actually by Robert Branch. A good hit by Branch and Rashad Gene Jr. forces the fumble. Now this time we're going to move Sean McMahon into motion. He's going to drive back into the backfield. What is JMU doing here? Oh, a little bit of trickeration. It goes to McMahon for a loss of three, though. Second and 13, and Duke is kind of stacking the box. We're not really running the ball a ton, but they are stacking the box, and he throws it off his back foot. No, that is not going to be a good look. Duke is going to pick that one off. A bad throw there by Joe Disher leads to a big interception by Duke, and this could be the momentum they were looking for. I actually stand corrected. That was Chase Sinclair that threw that pass. Joe Disher took a hard hit earlier. He was actually out for a little bit. We'll see if he comes back in the game, but Chase Sinclair's first pass of the game goes for an interception. So now we've got third and seven, trying to force Duke into a bad play here. So we're going to try and get a little pressure off the line. Flinders coming in. They throw a quick pass to the edge. Great blocking. Rashad G. Jr. with a hard hit, but it's still a first down. Duke is literally running with the most wide receivers I have ever seen in my entire life. So we can't really do too much. Now, we did switch to man on this defensive play. They're going to throw one to the right, and Lee is going to dip both feet down for a 22-yard gain. We're in a rough spot now because earlier we were, you know, feeling pretty good about ourselves. But now Duke is driving, and they can make it a one-score game if they get convert here so we're going to try to stop it they got a guy deep into the corner he's out of bounds just barely bad defense by jmu oh they're going to do a booth review unfortunately hopefully this ends up in our favor so we're going to see if he can actually get one foot down here he's going up uh you can't tell from that angle actually what is the referee going to say he's going to give us some bad news i got a feeling they say it actually stands you can't even tell from that angle after a couple of successful running plays it's time that joe disher finally you know spreads his wings a little bit tries to get a throw in but not on this one. We're going to throw that out of bounds. Now, Joe Disher hasn't really thrown in this drive, so we're going to give him an option here to, you know, spread his wings a bit. Now, a guy across the middle is going to be Clay Smith, who gets lit up but holds on to it. So, third and seven. It's a big third down for JMU because we desperately need to answer back. And there's going to be a sack on Joe Disher. Great coverage by Duke. Joe Disher gets sacked, I believe, for the first time in the game. And we're going to be forced to punt it. I mean, when you think about it, we had 14 unanswered points from one from offense, one on defense for the scores. And then since then, it's been a struggle, but a big sack there off of the edge. Thank you, JMU defense. Dimitri Holloway in on the tackle. Duke is feeling a little bit of life on. They're trying to score before the half right now. And if they can, our job's going to be a lot more difficult. Now, a big throw there, and they somehow end up getting that one. Branch comes in on the tackle. Charles Tubb misses it, and Donovan Dowling gets a 25-yarder. Big-time players make big-time plays, and right now, JMU needs to find themselves a big-time player. Curtis Oliver is going to... What is he doing? 
Curtis Oliver doesn't go up for that one. He gets a little bit lost. Shane Downing holds that one in to tie things up 14 all, assuming the extra point goes in. But again, look at here. Curtis Oliver had all the time in the world. He stops, and then Duke holds it in for a touchdown. The JMU Dukes desperately, I mean desperately need a big drive touchdown here. I mean, if this drive does not end in a touchdown, I don't know what's going to be going on with JMU because they've been way too cocky after getting out to an early lead. It's all tied up now. And I have a feeling that if JMU can just hold their blocks on offense, if the offensive line can come to play today, that this team will be just fine. Now, Drew Coates is out here running. 43 is going to try to get to him. He does rack him up at the 45, but not before Coates goes for 24. He already has 100 yards on the day. Now, after a loss of three, we got Joe Disher back here again looking for some sort of run. Oh, this has actually got good blocking. Joe Disher stretches up the field. Go, Joe Disher. Go. He runs into Cameron King, though, but he gets 25 yards inside, I believe, almost the red zone now. What a big play by the, the veteran quarterback. Back. After a huge pickup by Joe Disher, we're going to hand the ball off to Cameron King to see if he can keep the running game going, but he's lit up by the middle linebacker of Duke. Look how hard this hit is again. Boom! Destroys it. Duke has a heavy front. We're going to still run the ball, though. Can we actually get the first we can? Cameron King, again, finding ways on third and short to get that first down that JMU needs. First thing going now, under a minute left. Joe Disher being patient back here. He's going to try to roll around a little bit because he's finally getting some pressure. This time they're going to stop him at second and goal. 45 seconds left on second and goal. Joe Disher in the pocket. He's got an opportunity here with Henry Castle, and Henry Castle catches that one. What a way to thread the needle by Joe Disher there. His second passing touchdown today. He's been efficient, 9 of 13, almost a buck 50 on the on the air. He's been huge, and he was big on that drive. All JMU has to do right now is stop Duke from scoring. No field goals, no touchdowns, none of that, and they'll be just fine. Now, an opportunity here, and Robert Branch is going to get that one. He intercepts it. 30 seconds left. That's the third tur turnover by Duke here in the first half. Big-time players make big-time plays. Obviously, we don't want to force anything with 30 seconds left, but at least a field goal here would be monumental. Now, a pass here to Jordan Dotson is going to be shy of the mark. We're going to use our first timeout to make it second and three. A second and three, 25 seconds left on the clock. A couple of opportunities here. We do see Henry Castle wide open. We're going to try to get him down. Henry Castle is going to break a tackle, gets out of bounds like a veteran player there. And now we are inside, I believe, the 30 with an opportunity and at least a field goal. Under 20 seconds left, and it's second and 10. Now there's some options here. A dicey pass across the middle goes to Drew Coates. It's inside the 10 now, and we're using our second timeout. One left, but a big first half by Drew Coates. I told you guys we wanted to drop a 50 burger today so we're going to try to get something similar going today now we're going to see a rollout an opportunity for a touchdown and drew Coates. what is going on with this dude over 120 receiving yards here joe disher has three touchdowns we're still in the first half what a display by the jmu offense the first half was an eventful one but we have a 28 14 lead despite some bad plays we've done pretty well jmu is in a high position of power if they can score on this drive and keep things moving like they have been they'll be good but not if throwing passes like that so far in today's game jmu is three of four and they want to keep that trend going here on third downs but unfortunately oh joe disher's gonna break this one disher's gonna step up he breaks the second one he breaks the third one and they finally drop him one moxie from the young quarterback 11 yards should have been a sack but he crosses 50 yards rushing on the day with that so it's third and five we need joe disher in this offense to step up big here and we've got an opportunity, but this one's picked off by Hood. Disher's first interception of the afternoon is going to go to Hood. And then this one is going to be taken down all the way to about the 20. Big time play there by Duke. So Duke is ready to strike. The iron is high. We could have put them away with one big play. But unfortunately, Duke gets the ball, and now they're right in the distance of scoring. The JMU defense has bailed out the JMU offense so many times today, but can they do it again with so much pressure on them? And this time a pass is thrown. That's going to be an errant pass because of the pressure on the quarterback. So it's third and nine. JMU is going to try to stop Duke here. If they can, it's just a field goal. But what is going to happen? A couple of guys open in the middle. This one is a great play by Rashad Jean Jr. A guaranteed touchdown. He gets in there and he breaks it up to force fourth and nine. And with that, Duke says, you know what? We're going to try and take the points here. So they're going to line up for a field goal. Steven Weldon is trying to distract the kicker a little bit. This ball is going to be up. This one is kicked. It is nearly blocked, but it is going to be good as it's right down the middle of the uprights. An 11-point lead for JMU just isn't enough against a team like Duke. I mean, we're talking about the number seven team in the nation is struggling. But, oh, Clay Smith, he's going to spin out of that one. He's going to push down the left-hand side. 99 speed, but not fast enough quite to get away from Duke's defense there down at the 50. JMU needs to make sure they walk down here and get a touchdown. So we got Castle in motion coming into the backfield. Looks like a wide receiver option. That is going to be it. A pitch out to Henry Castle. How did that one get out? That could have been a fumble if you ask me, but still Henry Castle hauls it in to get the first. Drew Coates has been the man that JMU has relied on in the receiving core, but we haven't seen much of him 
in the past few drives, but Joe Ditcher says, don't worry, I'm going to run out of this one. He gets hit pretty hard, and those are hits that he cannot afford to take. He's already been knocked out once in today's game. We got to make sure it doesn't happen a second time. On second and short, they're probably expecting a run, so we go to the play action fake. Oh, we got Joe Dotson wide open. This was thrown late, but it's picked off again. McDuffie, this ball was thrown late. Joe Ditcher didn't see him until the last minute, and Duke comes up with another big turnover. If you're a fan of the JMU Dukes right now, the only way I can really describe what's happening is a uh, panic. Second and 10 now lining up, and I believe the I formation. We got a running back and a fullback in the backfield for Duke. From under the center, they're going to opt to throw this one. This one goes to Downing, who breaks a huge tackle, but Robert Branch comes in and cleans him up, only getting a 12-yard reception. Second and seven, as Duke continues to go with the hurry-up offense. It's been the one thing that's helping them, but oh no, what a huge interception. Rashad Robinson is going to go into the end zone completely untouched. JMU comes back, the fourth turnover of the game for Duke. There have been so many turnovers on both sides for both teams, a total of seven, but another pick six for JMU's defense. Again, look at this. Rashad Robinson completely jumps in on that wide receiver screen goes to the house completely untouched. Duke back to the hurry up offense again because it has been absolutely huge for them. Oh, a big hit by Holloway on the quarterback or on the halfback, but the quarterback is out here running. Cobbs is going to try to catch up to him. He finally does, and JMU lets a huge gain by Duke go down the middle of the field. Now, Duke is right where they want to be. A couple of options here. The quarterback is going to get lit up, though, by Mike Cobbs, second and 14 after another sack. On second and 14, we've got Max Ixer subbed in for McClendon on this time. He's going to try to get through. He gets a sack. Max Ixer is going to get a sack, third and 21 now a big stop by the young true freshman with third and 21 jamie is going to get way back down the field they don't want to get anything huge and this one's going to be thrown deep charles tuff's going to go up he lets that pass come in a huge interception by keiston fuller a huge reception by keiston fuller and JMU's quarterbacks fail them again. Now, it looks like JMU is dialing up a blitz now, but do go into the hurry up. Their offensive linemen have to be pretty tired. This ball goes out to the edge, and Downing holds in his second touchdown reception of the day. Duke scores to make it a 24, assuming the extra point goes in to 35 game. This is not over yet. Now, it's back to being an 11-point ball game, and we need something major. So, Steven Weldon's going to try to get a spark to this offense. He's going to go down the field. Steven Weldon may go completely untouched. There is a guy coming up on him. Steven Weldon jukes him out of his shoes. They force him down, but not before he gets a 59 yard return. The third quarter is nearly coming to a close, but JMU is still gonna try to put the pedal to the metal here. Now Joe Disher's moving, Joe Disher is going. I don't know if anyone's gonna catch up to him. He's got an opportunity to go up the field. He's gonna try to go down, but they bring him down at the one yard line. A big play by Disher, 47 yards. Put this man on the Heisman race already. This might be his staple game of the season. So with the ball on first and goal, we're gonna try to give it to Cameron King to see if he can go up the middle. Cameron King is gonna get hit, but he goes into the end zone, a two yard touch touchdown rush I believe his first touchdown of the afternoon big time players make big time plays and Joe Disher and Cameron King help this offense out big time there so going into the fourth quarter a 42 to 24 lead we're still trying to get that 50 burger so that means two more touchdowns to get us that score JMU has an opportunity to put Duke away once and for all and it's going to be by stopping them on a drive Unfortunately, they can't get the interception there, and Fuller gets another first down. Duke continues pushing that hurry-up tempo. It's working for him, so we can't be but so mad. Rashad Jane Jr. gets blocked there. Curtis Oliver's going to get trucked, and then finally Ortiz Jr. and Robert Branch stop him just shy of the marker. We've had to say it so many times today, but big-time players make big-time plays. And right now, JMU needs someone to step up and make a play against this Duke offense, but that was a big hit against the quarterback, almost forced a fumble. And with second to 15 with Duke again back in the shotgun, we need a stop here. Harris is going to try to take off on this one. We need someone to hit him, and Ortiz Jr. does make a stop, but he gets 11 before anyone puts a hit on him. Third and four, needing a major stop now. What's going to happen? They go to a halfback screen. We get the hit on him. We sack him. That's going to be a huge loss of about 12 yards. Three plus sacks in the afternoon. Aris Cole gets his first one of the day, though. Duke is definitely desperate. It's fourth and 16. They need something. They're going to hold on to any hope of getting a first down, but that one is going to be out of bounds. It's going to be a turnover, and JMU now has the ball. Time to milk that clock and get a couple more touchdowns. Now, this is a big drive for JMU. They need to answer back. They need to score somehow, some way. Now, they're in trouble, and Joe Ditcher takes a bad sack. Loss of 10 yards to make it third and 20. Now, Joe Ditcher took a huge hit on that play, so they're going to take him out of the game. Maybe it's a precautionary reason. Maybe he's actually injured, but they had to get him out. And then Chasing Clear goes another interception. Duke is going to take this one into the end zone. This game just got a little more interesting. The fourth turnover on the day for JMU. Sinclair is 0 for 2 with two picks. Not exactly a storybook ending for this guy. Just when you thought the game is over, you're completely wrong. Now, JMU has an opportunity to choke this one away. It's a 10-point lead. 
this game just got interesting. And as you can imagine, Duke is going to go for the onside kick. This one is going to go to Smallwood. Dimitri Smallwood is going to try to turn up the field. He does. He holds on to it. And Steve Smallwood gets that. With Chase Sinclair in the game and he still hasn't thrown an actual completion in today's ball game, we want to make sure that, you know, he doesn't really do much with it in terms of passing. And look at Cameron King said, just give the ball to me, coach. I'm going to march on the field for you. We have 177 rushing yards on the day. Big play. The largest of the game so far for Cameron King. So first and goal, we're going to opt to go to a read option here. Chase Sinclair is going to try to keep up to it. And he stumbles over the defensive guy's legs, falling down after one yard. So we found out that Joe Disher now has a concussion. He's out for the game. That's going to be interesting to see if he's out more than just one week. Now we feed Cameron King again to make it third and goal. It's third and goal. We're on the three. We're going to opt to go with sort of some sort of read option here. This one is not going to work. A big hit by Duke. Drops Chase and clear for a loss of four yards. And it's now fourth and goal. Time to kick that field goal. So here's our opportunity with two minutes left. We kick this field goal. This game is, you know, pretty much out of reach, but just not quite yet. So we got a 13-point lead. Two touchdowns could win this game for Duke, but hopefully they don't have enough time to do that. Duke continues to drive. We've had a couple close plays here, but under two minutes left, they have two timeouts. They need a touchdown ASAP. Now they go deep. We've got Charles Tud deep. He's going to go up, and he actually intercepts this one. Charles Tud blew a big play earlier in the ballgame, but a huge interception there should essentially seal this game. And even though JMU didn't get the 50 points that they wanted in today's game, they still played well at some times and bad in others. Drew Coates with seven catches, 150-plus yards, and two touchdowns was the MVP of today's ballgame. Huge game by him to step up. The defense played well, but the offense... They've got some work to do. From a rushing perspective, we had not one, but two guys go over 100 yards rushing today. Cameron King for 105, Joe Disher for 102, but only one rushing touchdown on the afternoon. In the air, the MVP was Drew Coach, though, with seven catches for 158 yards, two touchdowns, a long of 39. Henry Castle and Clay Smith both had big catches. Jordan Dodson just has not been a huge staple of this offense. We have to find a way to get him more involved. On defense, we were led by our captain, Robert Branch, who gets eight tackles, one interception. Rashad Jean Jr. had six hits, pretty much all of them being bone rattling we also saw max ixer aris cole and mike Hobbs all get one sack each and then in terms of the air we saw interceptions by charles tud robert branch curtis oliver and rashad robinson as always if you guys enjoyed this video make sure you guys crush the like let's go for like 300 likes in today's video if you want to see more jmu make sure you guys subscribe for more episodes too and check the playlist on the screen i'll catch you guys on the next one